Good afternoon. I'm Pastor Mark Colbo of the Michigan Lutheran Church of Michigan, North Dakota. Speaking to you from our beautiful dining room <laughs> and our home in the prairie, North Dakota. And um, we are in our midst of our uh, Lenten series for 2024. And today's date, of course, is the uh, was it the 13th? Uh, let's see, 10, 11, 12. Yes, uh, it's um, it's March 13th, 2024. We are in our series on the Ten Commandments and how far reaching and uh, how deep they are. And uh, some aspects, you know, you might not think immediately when you hear all these thou shalt nots. When you consider that they are positive statements about what is possible to do to make life better in this world. So we will take just a brief look at that. We're on the sixth commandment and the title uh, for the meditation regarding words by which our church lives is intimacy. And so we'll talk a little bit about that. But we'll have evening prayer. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and illumine your church. Joyous light of glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ, we have come to the setting of the sun, and we look to the evening light. We sing to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who led your people Israel by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May his word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are merciful, and you love your whole creation. And we, your creatures, glorify you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. O Lord, I call to you, come to me quickly. Let my prayer, uh, hear my prayer when I cry, when I cry to you. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Set a watch before my mouth, O Lord, and guard the door of my lips. Let not my heart incline to any evil thing. Let me not be occupied in wickedness with evildoers. But my eyes are turned to you, Lord God. In you I take refuge. Strip me not of my life. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Let the incense of our repentant prayer ascend before you, Lord God, and let your loving kindness descend upon us, that with purified minds we may sing your praises for the church on earth and the whole heavenly host, and may glorify you forever and ever. Amen. So, as I said, we are on commandment number six. You shall not 
commit adultery. Now, immediately everyone thinks about cheating, that Jesus is about cheating in marriage between spouses and one against one spouse or the other. And yes, that is true. Jesus and Luther, we will find, have some very more broad-reaching uh, implications. And as I quoted from the uh, Sermon on the Mount last week, I will read a little bit from the Sermon on the Mount this week. And, and although it seems a little bit narrow and speaks uh, maybe in terms that are going to be hard for our modern ears to understand, of course, you see that Jesus goes for depth in this commandment as in uh, the prohibition against murder. Jesus said uh, from the uh, beginning with the 27th verse of the fifth chapter of the gospel according to St. Mark. Jesus said, you have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, that everyone who looks at a woman with lust in his heart has already committed adultery with her. In your right eye, uh, if your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for the whole body to go into hell. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that anyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of adultery or unchast uh, sorry, unchastity, causes her to commit adultery, and whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. This is the gospel of our Lord, although you might say, well, that sounds an awful lot like the Muslim Sharia law. You know, they have all been seen to have cut off hands of uh, those who steal and all that. And uh, it is true, it is see, pretty extreme, but Jesus is trying to get us to sit up and recognize, of course, the seriousness of this business. And uh, about, you know, how easy it is for us to fall into sin. Now, I like to take uh, myself at this point to Luther usually who uh, has an even more radical proposal for our consideration. You know, we think immediately in our very salacious age about um, we jump to the conclusion that, oh, it's a, adultery, it's about sex. And it's about cheating, one ch spouse cheating on another spouse. Yes, it is about that, but about much, much more. In this age, too, we have, a, and of course, many you know, more conservative people will call this woke. <laughs> but it is about um, uh, attitudes. And um, thoughts and actions and words toward sexuality as a whole. And as I would say, toward re relationships, because, you know, the prohibition against adultery is not just, you know, to keep us from doing naughty stuff sexually, but it's about preserving relationships, you know, and relationships, of course, throughout history, especially 
that of marriage is not simply a friendship, although that should be a very important and big part of it, or companionship, or someone you can just live with, but it's, it's an economic reality. It's a business contract. We are partners. And even those who are not formally married will often have partners. And, and, and it's not just about uh, same gender relationships. You know, there are people who have, I've known who have uh, been living together as uh, male and female for many years. And, and of course, uh, without benefit of the, you know, the vows and the uh, certificate and the rings, but uh, as, uh, as, you know, partners. And in many ways, some uh, those people take uh, the relationship, I think, as seriously, if not more so, than a lot of married couples. And what I have to say here, too, uh, let me just interject this now before I lose you. Uh, it's not just about the, uh, you know, uh, uh, hetero relationships but also i think it touches upon relationships in the lgbtq community and should do so it's about loyalty and devotion and above all and this will be what you will hear me say this during this lenten series from week to week about trust remember how we begin the commandments that you should fear the Lord your God, uh, you should fear love and respect, you should fear love and trust the Lord your God above everything else. Well, relationships between people are based on trust or should be based on trust. And those that aren't are doomed to run into some very hard times, very much difficulty and abuse, manipulation, and misuse. Um, but trust, and whatever gender or whatever orientation or whatever uh, way you um, identify, developing a relationship, a committed relationship, should be one of trust. So, Luther, he wants us to think not strictly only of relationships in terms of, uh, well, uh, strictly marriage relationships or formal relationships, but our whole attitude towards sexuality. Uh, we are to fear and love God so that in matters of sex, our words and conduct are pure and honorable. And then he goes on to say a rather dated term, <laughs> maybe, and husband and wife love and trust each other. And of course, that is where the whole commandment originally originates from. And, you know, it's okay to be reminded of that. But I like the first part of that. Because if we can address that, then we've got a lot of our whole life not entirely sorted out, but we're addressing a lot of issues in our life. Because look at, you know, what we we're talking about not just marriages, we're talking about workplace relationships. And, and uh, you know, for I, I, I was just looking at a synod newsletter from our Eastern North Dakota Synod, and they've got some workshops lined up, what they call boundary training. And that's uh, for those of us who are religious leaders to be uh, getting together and being educated and informed, learning and growing with our regard to uh, the way we establish our relationships and view ourselves and the things 
we do and say with regard to others that do not cross boundaries, whether they are sexual boundaries or just personal boundaries. Um, that's very important in our day, and that's why we have a lot of issues, legal issues, in the workplaces about uh, harassment, uh, about uh, not being treated equally or fairly, uh, whether it's due to our, our gender or maybe the way we identify or uh, anything else. I mean, you know, we talk about spirituality, creed, um, not just lifestyle choices, but, you know, uh, personal beliefs. And so um, our, our, our conduct, of course, springs out of our, or develops or grows out of our attitudes. And our words grow out of our attitudes and our thoughts. Now, as Luther said in another place, you know, you can't keep the birds from flying around your head, but you can keep them from make, making a nest in your hair. That was a cute saying of Luther, but he has a point. You know, all of the nastiness, all of the talk, all of the temptations, all of the things, and even the thoughts in our hearts and our minds, they can just pop up and creep in because we indeed are sinners. We're not perfect people. We have that within us that wants to be naughty, wants to be selfish, wants to be autonomous and uh, rule our own life and perhaps even at the expense of other people and their comfort, and their integrity and dignity. And above all, we must respect that. There's a lot of good here in, uh, although it sounds dated like in Ephesians, Paul's letter, he talks about husbands and wives, you know, being, well, he uses the term be subject to, but, uh, and then uh, wives are to respect. But, um, it's, it's a mutual thing. I think he's striving to get at. It's a two-way street that you love and trust each other and respect the boundaries. And there are boundaries within marriage, very much as there are, of course, you know, without. And there are boundaries within any relationships that you have the trouble when people get in trouble it's usually because they have the trespass that's where one of the great words i know we have for sin is trespass crossing boundaries that are set up that are important that should not be crossed and and of course it's always helpful when those things are made clear. And of course, you know, you should learn and grow. And even without another person having to tell you where those boundaries are, you should know. In many cases, what is a boundary? Just as you have boundaries. And you would not want them to cross. See, that's to get back to the old golden rule to do unto others as you would have them do unto you. So respect others' boundaries as you would have them respect yours. It takes uh, another thing, another word, um, I throw at you here, uh, something that we all are sadly uh, often running short of in this world, in this time. But it's so important for all, the keeping of all commandments. 
in all our relationships is empathy. We should em empathize and put ourselves in the place of other people so that we know how to behave, how to act, how to treat others with the respect that we ourselves would want to be treated, to grant others the dignity and the integrity of person that we ourselves wish to be treated. And so in terms of relationships, in terms of intimacy, because that is, uh, as the priest Henry Nouwen uh, had a great little book on intimacy, and he's not talking about sexual intimacy. He's talking about, although, you know, that comes up once in a while in the discussion, but he's talking about the relationships and the closeness we yearn as human beings for fellowship, for friendship, for relationship, to be close, to be intimate, to know others as we ourselves wish to be known. And so it is vitally important that we Respect that. That's intimacy with boundaries. <laughs> intimacy, you know, where the lines are set. Hopefully clearly drawn, but easily discovered. And that we come to love others then, as we would want ourselves to be loved and hopefully better than we love ourselves. Amen. So we continue this evening prayer. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Savior, Jesus Christ. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit watch over you, strengthen you, and keep you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.